I'm 83 years old, but I don't feel that I'm older than 60, maybe stronger. I traveled to Europe as a fighter, and I fought everybody that could ever get fights in my own way, so I fought Gustav Ida, who was the light heavyweight champion of Europe. He weighed 180 pounds, I weighed 143. Mark Kahn, the guy that's the referee, Joe Lewis's fight was the referee. I speak five different languages and a couple of more on top of it that I can read and write. And he said to his manager in German, I'm going to kill that blind guy. So I told him in German, he didn't know that I spoke German. I said, Will you be a verflucht Nazi? And you have my mother told me, You are a dirty Nazi, and you killed my mother. I beat him in the dress room. We went into the ring. And I know if he hits me, I'll weigh me by 40, 38, 40 pounds. I'd be careful. I hit him a shot in the liver. That's very painful. If anybody got hit in the liver. And I hit him another shot and I hung him on the rope. And I got a picture of this thing over here. I don't know if they brought it here. Then I played, as I said, I played and I was told by the State Department that if I get hurt in that fight, I cannot come to the United States. So, but I took a chance anyhow, I felt I had to show the people that I'm good enough to. Came to the United States, out of the crime pen, into the fire. I got a letter from Harry Truman, President of the United States, welcome to the United States Army. So I started calling some of my relatives, see, and I said, look at this, I got a letter from the President. They said, yes. Yeah. You're going to be in the Army. Went through my training, to ship me out to Okinawa, Korean War broke out. And we were the first ones in there. Now I get a letter from President Obama. Thank you for your service to the military, but you're not going to get any raise in your compensation. I didn't need it. I got one. But I'll tell you something. This is the greatest country in the world. I just celebrated my 50th anniversary on February 24th. But I have to tell you a little story about nine or ten months ago, I was walking and I started getting pain in my heart. And I think it's gas pain, it's nothing. And I said, he went through so much, this is nothing. Went home, didn't say nothing to my wife. But a week later, I walked through the same neighborhood, by the same house, and the same thing happened. That someday, I went over to my son and daughter's house. <coughs> my son is a professor at Chance. He's a cardiothoracic periodic surgeon. He's the director of the general department. And he said, Dad, I told him, I don't know what possessed me to tell him the story, that I had pains. He said, Monday morning, the first thing you come down, we'll check you out. About 3.30 in the morning, on Monday morning, I got the same thing. So I told my wife to call him, and she called him. He says, call 911. So I said, no, I says, you come and pick me up, I write the light right in style. And I went in to take a shower. I didn't want to go to the hospital feeling that somebody's going to check the gas at him. <laughs> but I figured, he is a doctor and a surgeon. He knows all the angles to get me in there. Because if you 
go by ambulance, you have to go to the old surgeon. This way I went right in there and carried it. But I never believed that the athlete that I am, because I still work out. Every single day, I punch that bag two hours. Walk about eight miles a day. And when they gave me the nuclear test, when you get on the treadmill, and I went 45, 50, 60 minutes, and the doctor, after I got off, he says, can I just give an example? He said, because you, between zero and three, is when you drive a car at 100 miles an hour, you did 150 miles. How old are you? I was 38. <laughs> so you never believe, but you see, the will to live and the strength and the belief that you can do it. Anything you want to do in your life, I've ascertained things in my life. I traveled to Japan, food factories. I have a patent in the environment. I can eliminate 99 and 9.5% of nitrogen oxide. But unfortunately, the American big chemical companies have more money than I have. And they in the pocket to politicians because when I went and testified, I told them I come here with the patent and a bear there's some kids in here. So nothing just call me everybody, Carter, Gingrich, uh, all the senators and congressmen, everyone to call me. But no one to cough up the money. And every time when you go through a different country, you get the same letter, due to the fact that they're still investigating and doing other things, because I would put companies that manufacture urea, ammonia, and I was told by a friend, they would kill me before they had the best and go to the market. But I'm patient. I have nothing else to do but, you know, retire. So I work the computer and I try to do things. I call my son and tell him things about medical things. He said, Dad, I don't have time to go make TV. I'm in the operating room, so I'm glad that you call. So anyway, this is something that I must talk about. My life, if I had to change anything in my life, I'd like to change five minutes years. Nothing else. I have beautiful children and I have terrific grandkids, and this is the greatest asset that we have in this country, is our children and our grandkids. I was honored yesterday the Queen of Peace at the 25th anniversary, and they had the high priest, and they had the all the educators and this little Jewish people. So I was in, when I lived in New Jersey, I was the only Jew a member of the Italian club. I'm the only Jew a member now of the Queen of Peace. And I'll be speaking over there tomorrow, 1215 also. I spoke at Kanapa a week ago. And the principal told me if he could get the attention that I got from the kids over there, he'd be the happiest guy. I said, well, we can work out a deal. <laughs> <laughs> but as I said, you have to have a sense of you and you got to smile. Nothing is bad. Where does a hunchback happen? When he sees a hunchback bigger than his own. <laughs> You don't know the problems that you have in life because there's an old expression if everybody would put their problems out in the backyard and somebody would grab, you know, grab, you wouldn't want to grab somebody else's problems. You run for your own. You have to try to do everything in this world and treat people the way you want to be treated. If you treat people the way you want to be treated, you can't go wrong. 
Life is very, very good if you make it. The most important to you in this world are your families, your parents, the teachers, the principals. Because when you are in college, you're an idealist. When you get out of college, you become a realist. Because you know there's a real world out there, and you've got to cope with it. I don't want to get too graphic, but anyway, see the kids over there yelling that I should say more. Okay. <laughs> I came to the United States in 1947. I did everything that you could think of. Try to get an education, number one. Well, my grandkids and my kids came to me and they said, school is tough. My son went to Cornell University, and my other kids went to different universities. And they called me one day, they said, Cornell is tough. And I said, can you answer my question? What's toughest? Four years at Cornell, or five and a half years in the Nazi concentration camp. <laughs> Don't try to impress me. And when my grandkids came to me and they said, I got a B, I got three A's, and I says, if you try a little harder, you're going to get all A's. Because when I came to this country, I couldn't speak English. I think I've got a pretty good vocabulary. I went to college, I got a degree in engineering and in chemistry. I had a textile factory. I employed 1,100 people. And one day, my wife's best friend's husband was my attorney, and he loved to play the dog tracks in Florida. And he was supposed to buy my insurances, cover everything, and unfortunately, I paid checks and never insurance. And one day, my factory was in Carter, New Jersey, 275,000 square feet. And the bill that bought the steel from Third Avenue, Ellen, New York, the Japanese reprocessed it and sold it back to the United States. Unfortunately, the building that I had was built with that steam. Concrete roof, and there was a snowstorm and a rain at the same time, and the way collapsed the building, the roof. But on December, oh, sorry, on uh, December 4th, I said to my partner, who was chairman, by the way, and everybody said to me, a Jew and a Nazi? The guy was four years old when the war ended. So he was a Nazi. It shows you the, the narrow-mindedness of certain people. That was a young kid, and he never did anything wrong. So when I was called by the, the fire department that the building collapsed, I said, don't call me, call the roofer. I can't fix the building or the roof. But when you write down there and you see what you put in in so many years of work, like somebody sticks a knife in your heart, and I never had insurance, lost the building, lost everything. But I had profit sharing in 1968 when no one knew what the word profit sharing means. 